are you going? Today, our topic is long. Just as the way when we were learning hard, we will follow the same structure of knowledge that are main physiological functions of long and its relations with meridians, tissues, and orifices, emotions, and seasons. The functions, or we say the state of long, in the human body was described as the long holds the position of counselor assistant. Management and regulation come from here. These kinds of functions are specially explained into four aspects. They are governing qi, fei zu qi, si hu xi, freeing and regulating the waterways, tong tiao shui dao, linking with all vessels, fei chao bai mai, and governing management and regulation, zhu zhi jie. Number one, governing qi. First of all, what qi refers to? Here, qi can be understood as both qi of the whole body and qi of respiration. Lung can govern qi of the whole body. How does it work? Let us take a look on the production of qi in the body. Basically, from the source, we have clear qi from the natural world, which is taken into the body through respiration. And essence qi, which is transformed from grain and water, or we say food in another word. So clear tea or fresh air combines with essence tea and they make up the pectoral tea, zhong tea, as named in TCM, which accumulates in the lung and in turn plays a role in assisting lung to keep regular respiration and also assisting the heart T to promote the blood circulation. Therefore, from this perspective of view, pectoral T is the T of the whole body, which sources from both ear and the food, and is originally formed in the lung. Here, I have a question. Although we have already known that lung governs the qi of the whole body because of the formation and accumulation of pectoral qi in the lung, well, which organs do you think are the most important organs that take part in the production of qi of the whole body? Lung? Any other organs? Where the essence qi comes from? Yes, spleen. So, the most important organs for the production of qi of the whole body are lung and spleen. On the other hand, lung governing qi of the whole body is reflected in the regulation of qi movements. Movements of qi in the body are mainly classified into four forms. Ascending, descending, entering, and existing. In the breathing process, inhale is a demonstration of descending and entering, while exhale is ascending and exiting. Therefore, the regular respiration of lung can regulate the movement of T and maintain a balance in T movements. For governing T of respiration, zu hu xi zhi qi, I don't think it is necessary to make any further explanation. Before we go in to learn the second function of lung, I would like to make an extra explanation on very special physiological features of lung. Actually, all functions of lung are relying on its nature of ascent and dispersion and purification and descent. Xuan fa shu jiang. These two opposite movements conducted by lung in normal condition keep in a dynamic equilibrium which ensure lung's operation in different functions. Just as the figure displays, through ascent and dispersion, lung discharges the internal turbid T, distributes the fluid and the food essence to the whole body, Disperse the defense qi to the superficial parts of the body, and it diffuses the fluid outward and transforms into sweat. 
Meanwhile, by purification and descent, lung inhales the fresh air, diffuses the fluid downward and changes into urine, and as well as cleans the foreign matters. Therefore, we can say that physiological functions of lung are based on its physiological features that are ascent and dispersion, purification and descent. The second function of lung is that lung can free and regulate the waterways. Just as the sentence implies, lung plays a very important role in water metabolism. Together with spleen and the kidney, these three zhang organs are regarded as the most important organs in water metabolism. That's why we have an understanding that the lung is the upper source of water, the spleen is the middle source of water, and the kidney is the lower source of water. Fei wei shui zhi shang yuan, pi wei sui zhi zhong yuan, ran hou shen wei sui zhi xia yuan. For the specific procedure of its water regulating function, actually I have already explained in the figure. Through ascent and dispersion, lung distributes the fluid essence to the whole body, diffuses the fluid outward and transforms into sweat. By purification and descent, lung diffuses the fluid downward and changes into urine and clean the pathological products such as phlegm, retained fluid. Number three, lung links with all vessels, fei chao bai mai. In our last class, we have learned that the heart governs the vessels which is based on the heart connecting with vessels. Here, we say lung link with all vessels. So, what is their difference? My advice is that we can understand them from the view of blood generation. In TCM, the components of blood are nutritive tea and body fluid. Both of them come from food and after the reddening function of heart, changing into blood. Well, in addition to these two components, we need air exchange taking place in vessels which is actually relying on lung, relying on its physiological structure of linking with all vessels. So actually, lung linking with all vessels rather than a function is more like a physiological basis. Number four, the last one, governing management and regulation. It is neither a specific function it is just like a summarization on the role of lung in zhang fu organs. Let's move back to what Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic had recorded on lung. The lung holds the position of counselor assistant. Management and regulation come from here. See, management and regulation, it is actually cited from the sentence. If we regard the heart as the king, the monarcha, then the lung is the ministry, the counselor assistant. In specific, heart governs blood, lung governs tea. Heart takes part in the production of blood, while lung works for the ear exchange within blood. Heart tea promotes blood to flow inside vessels, while Pectoral tea, which is formed and accumulated in the lung, assists heart tea in promoting blood circulation. Moreover, inhale and exhale of respiratory tea taking place in lung plays a regulative role in tea movements of the whole body. All these are summarized into lung governing management and regulation. In the end, we will have a quick learning on lung's relations. Let's turn back to the figure again. Lung and the large intestine build up an exterior-interior relationship based on two meridians, which are the hand tai yin lung meridian and the hand yang ming large intestine meridian. Furthermore, 
lung is connecting to skin and manifesting on body here. Opening into nose, relating to sorrow, and corresponding to autumn. All the above is significant when TCN make diagnosis and conduct treatment accordingly. Okay, these are the contents for long. Thanks for your attention and I see you next time.